वेलकम टू डॉक्टर अनिमा उपाध्याय केमिस्ट्री इन टेक्नोलॉजी एंड केमिस्ट्री लैब वीडियोस इन टूडेज वीडियो वी विल लर्न द पॉसिबल वाइवाबोसी क्वेश्चन एंड देर आंसर्स ऑन द डिटर्मिनेशन ऑफ फॉस्फोरस इन आयरन एंड मैग्नीजोर्स दिस वीडियो आई एम मेकिंग ऑन स्पेशल रिक्वेस्ट फ्रॉम माई स्टूडेंट कम्युनिटी फॉर दो स्टूडेंट्स द फॉस्फोरस डिटर्मिनेशन is in their syllabus so please share this video among all your friends and colleagues so that most of the students can get benefited also don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that if you are the one who want me to make a video of your topic of interest you can approach me now let's begin with the determination of phosphorus in iron and manganese ores so if you are performing this experiment the very first question that could be asked to you is what is an ore an ore is a mineral from which metal can be extracted economically and profitably why phosphorus determination is important in iron ore phosphorus is one of the most harmful or deleterious element in the iron ore it forms iron phosphide during reduction process thus making the metal brittle therefore its determination is extremely important prior to the extraction of the metal from the ore also excess phosphorus increases the cost of steel making what is the upper limit of phosphorus in the steel industry the upper limit of phosphorus in the iron ore feed in the steel industries is 0.07 to 0.08% by weight how phosphorus can be determined in iron and manganese ores phosphorus can be determined in the ores by precipitating it from acidic solution and dissolving the precipitate in a known excess of standard alkali the unreacted alkali is then back titrated using standard hydrochloric acid can phosphorus be directly titrated with standard acid yes direct titration of orthophosphates pyrophosphates and the titration of reduced acids of phosphorus are a routine is quinoline phosphomolybdate method a back titration method yes it is a back titration method where unreacted alkali is titrated with standard hydrochloric acid what are the indicators used in the process the indicators used are methyl orange and phenolphthalein what is methyl orange indicator used for it is used to standardize the hydrochloric acid with sodium carbonate solution when is phenolphthalein indicator used the phenolphthalein indicator is used in performing the back titration of sodium hydroxide with standard hydrochloric acid what are the reagents required in the quinoline phosphomolybdate method the reagents required are solutions of sodium hydroxide hydrochloric acid and sodium carbonate all 0.1 normal indicators such as methyl orange and phenolphthalein citromolybdate reagent potassium borate solution 0.5 to 1% and quinoline hydrochloride solution what are the equipment required to perform the analysis the equipment required are electronic balance to weigh the salt for preparation of solution glass beaker hot plate to heat the solution conical flask burette wattman filter paper number 40 and pulp filter what is the principle of the method the principle of the method is simple after separation of silica from the ore phosphate is precipitated from its acidic solution by treating it with citromolybdate and quinoline solution the precipitate is then dissolved in a known excess of sodium hydroxide and the excess alkali is then back titrated using standard hydrochloric acid 
and phenolphthalein as indicator. Name the precipitate formed and state its color when acidified ore solution is treated with citromolybdate and quinoline hydrochloride solution. A yellow curdy precipitate of quinoline phosphomolybdate appears when acidified ore solution is treated with citromolybdate and quinoline hydrochloride solution. The phosphate ions reacts with molybdate ion to produce a colored complex. Does the precipitate of quinoline phosphomolybdate be dissolved immediately in sodium hydroxide solution? No, the precipitate should not be dissolved instantly in sodium hydroxide, but it should be left overnight in the solution to settle down, after which it is filtered, washed till it becomes free from acid and then it is dissolved in standard axis alkali. Explain the preparation of quinoline hydrochloride solution. To prepare a solution of quinoline hydrochloride, 60 ml of concentrated hydrochloric acid is taken in a large beaker to which 300 to 400 ml of water is added. It is heated to around 70 to 80 degrees centigrade. To this 50 ml pure quinoline free from reducing ag agents is added. The solution is stirred so that it gets mixed uniformly. It is cooled and diluted to 1 liter in a volumetric flask. Explain the preparation of citromolybdate reagent. Citromolybdate reagent can be prepared either by using molybdenum trioxide MOO3 or by using sodium molybdate. But both the reagents when used includes three steps. First step in both reagents is preparation of acid solution that is A. Second step is preparation of molybdate solution that is B. And third step is preparation of citromolybdate reagent. So the acid solution is prepared by taking citric acid in 250 to 300 ml water in a beaker to which concentrated hydrochloric acid is added. It is stirred and it is stored in a reagent bottle. We name it A, acid solution. Second is the preparation of molybdate solution. So if we are using molybdenum trioxide, there we, you, we take 50 grams of MOO3, add to around 200 ml water followed by the addition of 11 grams of sodium hydroxide. The mixture is then heated with constant stirring until the molybdic anhydride dissolves completely. This hot solution of molybdate is then added to the solution A that is acid solution in the hot condition along with continuous stirring. Then the mixture is cooled and filtered using pulp pad and it is diluted to 1 liter. Because the solution is blue or green in color, so potassium borate is added dropwise until the color discharges. If you are using sodium molybdate as the reagent to prepare the molybdate solution, the acid solution is prepared as described above, that is citric acid is dissolved in water along with concentrated hydrochloric acid along with the stirring and it is stored. For preparation of molybdate solution, instead of taking molybdenum trioxide, here we dissolve sodium molybdate in 200 ml water by continuous stirring and heating it. The hot molybdate solution is then added to solution A that is the acid solution with constant stirring and heating. Then it is cooled and filtered. In this solution also potassium borate solution is added dropwise till the greenish color discharges or disappears. Explain the quinoline phosphomolybdate procedure in brief. The method includes eight steps starting from weighing of the sample around 0.25 to 0.5 gram ore sample is taken in a beaker 
to which 25 ml concentrated hydrochloric acid is added along with a few drops of nitric acid. It is digested on a hot plate till complete dissolution of the ore takes place. It is heated further till it bakes. Now to this 10 to 15 ml dilute hydrochloric acid is added and it is brought to a boil. Around 20 to 25 ml water is added. It is cooled and filtered using a Wattman filter paper number 40. The residue is washed several times with distilled water and the residue is discarded. Filtrate along with the washings is collected in a 500 ml conical flask neutralized with sodium hydroxide till the iron gets precipitated. Dissolve the precipitate in excess hydrochloric acid around 2 to 5 ml. Boil it and add 50 ml citromolybdate reagent already prepared. Boil it again and now add 50 ml quinoline hydrochloride solution drop wise with continuous stirring and heating till a yellow curdy precipitate of quinoline phosphomolybdate appears. Boil it further for 10 to 15 minutes and leave it overnight to settle down. Next day, filter it using pulp and wash the precipitate 2 to 3 times with 1 is to 9 hydrochloric acid followed with distilled water till it is free from the acid. Transfer the precipitate in the conical flask Add little water, dissolve the precipitate in known excess of 0.1 normal sodium hydroxide solution. Titrate the excess sodium hydroxide with a standard 0.1 normal hydrochloric acid using phenolphthalein indicator. The end point is indicated with the discharge of pink color to colorless. Run a blank solution without sample to calculate the percentage of phosphorus. Also analyze a CRM or SRM material under identical conditions with the same reagents. Let the blank solution value be V1 and the sample volume of standard hydrochloric acid be V2. Explain the calculations for the determination of phosphorus. The calculation is very simple. Here it is calculated in percentage of phosphorus by weight. So we take the difference of the blank and sample reading that is V1 minus V2 which is multiplied with the normality of the standard hydrochloric acid and the factor 0 0.001193 and it is divided by the mass of the sample taken in grams. And it is multiplied by 100 to get the results in percentage. What do you understand by CRM and SRM? CRM and SRM are reference materials. They are standard reference materials. CRM stands for certified reference material and SRM stands for standard reference materials whose values are known. Why it is suggested to analyze at least one SRM or CRM? Analyzing SRM or CRM with the method employed for the sample analysis validates the method and technology used. If the results obtained for phosphorus using the employed method for reference material is in close proximity as per the reported results, it validates the reliability of the method employed for the sample determination. What is pulp filter and why it should be used? Pulp filter is a porous substance such as paper or sand that allows fluid to pass through it but retains the suspended solid particles. It is used because of its higher efficiency of particle retention and its durability that is strength. Why citric acid is added in citromolybdate reagent? Citric acid avoids the interference of soluble silicates. It also prevents the complex 
formed from getting oxidized. Why few drops of nitric acid is added to the sample during its dissolution? A few drops of nitric acid addition ensures complete dissolution of the sample without its iron content getting precipitated as oxide. What is the role of KbRO3? Borate is added to prevent the harmful effects of hydrofluoric and sulfuric acid. Give the brief outline of the method in short. The method involves formation of phosphomolybdic acid in a solution free from ammonium salts followed by its precipitation as the salt of quinoline. The quinoline phosphomolybdate precipitate is dissolved in excess sodium hydroxide and the unreacted alkali is titrated with standard hydrochloric acid using phenolphthalein as indicator. What is the role of sodium carbonate solution in the method? Sodium carbonate solution is used to standardize hydrochloric acid solution. What is the other method for determination of phosphorus? The ammonium phosphomolybdate method is also recommended for routine analysis of phosphorus. In what samples the back titration methods are suitable to determine phosphorus content? The methods are useful in the analysis of minerals, fertilizers, ferrous and non-ferrous metals. They are of almost universal applications. Are these methods volumetric methods? For determination of phosphorus, yes, these are volumetric methods for determination of phosphorus. Is the principle of ammonium phosphomolybdate method and quinoline phosphomolybdate method same? Yes, they are based on the same principle, but quinoline phosphomolybdate is superior to the ammonium phosphomolybdate method. State the superiorities of quinoline phosphomolybdate method. The superiorities are that the precipitate formed in quinoline phosphomolybdate is less soluble and is free from absorbed and occluded impurities as well as from cations which may interfere in the titration of the precipitate. The method is applicable in the presence of calcium, magnesium, iron, aluminium, alkali salts and citrates. Chromium up to 18 times and titanium up to 3.5 times of phosphorus have no effect on the method. The percentage of vanadium should not exceed one fifth of the phosphorus content. Addition of nitric acid prevents precipitation of iron as oxide. Effect of silica is avoid avoided by the addition of boric acid. Interference of soluble silicates is avoided by the addition of citric acid. The citromolybdate complex is highly stable and its reaction with silicic acid is prevented. The reaction with phosphoric acid proceeds normally. So here I stop. I have taken almost all the possible questions that can be put to you during your YYM and lab exam. Do well in the exam if you have any queries. Please leave the question in the comment box. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to share this video among your friends and to subscribe to my channel. Take care and bye bye.